Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. I am Olakunle Kasumo. I hope you have been keeping safe during this most difficult time globally. Please do your best to heed to all the expert advice on self and communal protection. Meanwhile, like the old saying goes, this too shall pass. Please remain positive and focus on the bright side of life no matter what. Let's get started today with another question we are often asked. What is ISBN and why do I need one? Please grab a copy of any book around you and flip to the back. Can you see the barcode at the bottom of the book? You can see the bars with a number written on top and below the bars. That's what is commonly referred to as ISBN number. Well, you don't need to put number there, really, because the end there signifies number. But most people call it ISBN number. So what does it really mean? ISBN is the International Standard Book Number. It's a numeric commercial book identifier which is intended to be unique. Publishers purchase ISBNs from an affiliate of the International ISBN Agency. So there is an agency that issues out ISBN numbers. An ISBN is assigned to each separate edition and variation of a publication, except for reprintings. For example, if you have a book and the book has an e-book version, a paperback version, audiobook version, and a hardcover version, each will have a different ISBN. The ISBN is 10 digits long if assigned before 2007. Basically, if your ISBN was assigned before 2007, it will have 10 digits. And then 13 digits long if that ISBN was assigned on or after 1st of January 2007. The method of assigning an ISBN is nation-specific and varies between countries, often depending on how large the publishing industry is within a country. Another identifier which is similar to ISBN is the International Standard Serial Number, ISSN. This is used for periodical publications such as magazines and newspapers. So basically magazines and newspapers and so on have ISSN numbers, whereas books have ISBN. I hope that helps. If you have any question you would like us to tackle, Please send them and we'll be happy to explain. Now, have you ever seen or read this book titled The Man Died? The book is the prison memoir of Professor Wallace Shoinka, Nigeria's Nobel Prize winner in literature and iconic African figure. Wallace Shoinka spent about two years in solitary confinement without trial during the Nigerian Civil War. In the book The Man Died, Shoinka records his arrest and interrogation, the efforts made to incriminate him, and the searing mental effects of solitary confinement. Solitary confinement can be very terrible, well, according to those who have experienced it, and uh, uh, as the rest of us can well imagine. Now, flip over to uh, now and check out this book, much newer than The Man Died, which was written many years ago. This book titled... The Man Leaves, apt title if you ask me. It's a fascinating book about Wale Shoenka, authored by Dr. Oke Ndebe, who is a prolific and award-winning Nigerian writer. The book is an adaptation of a fascinating conversation yeah. Oke had with uh, Wale Shoenka uh, covering life, literature, and politics. We are giving away five copies of this book to five lucky people. Now, all you need to do to win a copy is to respond to the following question on your screen. How many novels has Wally Shoenka written and what are their titles? Now, please note, we are not asking for the number of plays he's written or dramas or essays or poems. We're saying how many novels has he written and what are their titles? Please send your answers to us via Twitter by tagging our Twitter handle at Channels Books. Go to Twitter at Channels Books. Just tag at Channels Books and then we're going to see it. 
we will pick the first 20 people who give us the right answers and do a raffle draw to pick five out of the 10. Please stay close to our Twitter handle and other social media platforms for announcements. I suggest you give this a shot because The Man Lives is a book worth having. So last week, we showed you the second part of that conversation between Dr. Ok and Wale Shoinka and promised to show you the final part today. We got so many positive responses from people who watched that particular episode and some expressed their eagerness to watch the concluding part this week. So let's get cracking then. Here's the third and final part of that no holds bad chat the younger accomplished writer Okendebe had with his older globally celebrated mentor, Professor Wale Shoinka. Enjoy this. We see a lot of initiative in the creative area, don't we? Mm. Uh, amongst the writers in Nigeria, in, in uh, Nollywood, in, in music. Mm. Would you, I don't know how much of the current mm -hmm. uh, Nollywood and uh, music scene that you follow. Well, I must say that I have improved mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. For a number of years, uh, I turned on Nollywood only if I wanted to sleep quickly. <laughs> so that I know that two minutes, I'm gone. <laughs> now, I've improved yeah. because the quality, I persuaded myself at least to see one or two things. Yeah. It's a word which I hate, by the way, you know, Nollywood. Oof. I think after Hollywood and Bollywood and then Gollywood, yeah. Gollywood yeah. Kennywood, then it, this is what I talk about, this imitativeness, yeah. you know. Not even the sense of saying, look, let's do something different and be inspired by a different name. Anyway, that's another mm -hmm. uh, story. I've written about that already. Um, <clears throat> and quite some good material is beginning to come out. In fact, I've even learned to utter the word Nollywood. It took me years to bring myself to use that expression. So I, I manage. I wish, I just wish they would give themselves another name. It'll help matters a lot. It'll even, I think, inspire them yeah. in a different way, but that's speculative. If you look at the internet, mm -hmm. which has become social media, of which you are quite ambivalent to put it mildly, um, it's become a place where young people vent about their frustrations uh, concerning this country and the world that they've been left, or the world that they have helped to create. Um, but do you see social media as perhaps a tool to articulate an alternative to the mess and to the crisis that we're steeped in. It very easily could be. But once again, the, the negative mentality, you know, has taken control. Talking about co-opting, for instance, do you know that a number of um, politicians actually run this network of responses, mm -hmm. yes. and they can actually hire and pay, and there are applications which virtually regurgitate in various forms the same message. That's what social media has become. Mm -hmm. the, the few exceptions are overwhelmed, subsumed under vomit, nothing but vomit, subsumed, to, you know, totally uh, relegated to inconsequence by what I call the social network masturbators, mm -hmm. because most of them go on that network just to masturbate, mm -hmm. to feel good, mm -hmm. and yes, they have poisoned mm -hmm. the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and they have, uh, they, 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 they just, uh, they pollute even privacy, mm -hmm. they make nonsense of privacy. Mm -hmm. I find it very ironic because uh, UNESCO, uh, contributed under um, uh, Matthew Mbo, who was then Director General, mm -hmm. to the creation of an alternative information uh, channel, yes, network. And I certainly was part of that team, you know, which worked towards it. So to see it Faster taking that. this form is one of the most depressing uh, 
consequences of genuine effort are, are, mm -hmm. are undergone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, I don't do Facebook mm -hmm. and do a um, blog. Twitter. I don't uh, what a tweet. Instagram. <laughs> Nothing. But you are present Instagram. there. Instagram. Mm -hmm. You are present there. There are people who represent. Well, I know that, and we closed down a number as we, as a come on, we closed down those. We can close down because they have nothing to do with me. One or two, yeah, uh, okay, respectable, they're, yeah, respectable, and they're very sincere. They know what they're doing, and uh, so we leave those alone. Maybe two that I know about, and I said no, leave these ones to do whatever they want. But the number, and most of them Nigerians, we, we closed down. You know, so you have been fiercely committed to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You have been fiercely committed to the promise of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What has been the source of that commitment? No, I don't have the confidence in the promise of Nigeria. Okay. I, I just take Nigeria now as it comes. Mm -hmm. And I work to secure the, the potential mm -hmm. of groups, individuals in whom I believe, hopefully that maybe one day there'll be enough of a, of a critical mass mm -hmm. to make the changes. Mm -hmm. But in terms of Nigeria, the concept of Nigeria for me, you know I use the expression nation space most mm -hmm. of the time. Yes. yes. My concept of Nigeria before independence and immediately after independence is so different from what that expression means today. The failure to even take steps to realize the potential. Look, look at the, the, um, the, the, the objection to reviewing even the state of Nigeria. Yeah. Call restructuring, reconfiguring, call it whatever you want. It is so clear that this contraption, as it stands, is not working. Mm -hmm. And yet you have people who come out, you know, the super patriots, Nigeria will not be dismembered. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about dismembering. Yes. People are just saying, mm -hmm. rearrange yes. this thing. But they occupy those uh, rhetorical mm -hmm. positions, the rara uh, oldies, mm -hmm. you know, no different mm -hmm. from the Yahoo Yahoo boys. So not only they are older yes. and they, uh, they are able to beat their breast and say that they know more about it because they are older, which is a lie. You know, anyway, they only know. A is there a way to? Own. To compel this revision, this reviewing, this restructuring of our country, is there a way for? Uh, because I believe that the majority of Nigerians recognize that their country is not working, mm -hmm. and therefore would want to re-examine the terms of our engagement, okay. coexistence. Uh, sadly, whether it's Obasanjo or Buhari now, those in office always find a way to say Nigeria is non-negotiable. Is there a way for Nigeria? Because I was talking to somebody recently mm. and he said that those who believe in restructuring should actually say we're not going to participate in these elections under the current constitution and arrangement. Are there other ways? Would you support that sort of... Uh, well, I, I have put it in a different way. Yes. You know, what I, uh, that they should demand mm -hmm of anybody at any level who puts himself or herself forward for election, a commitment, a written, recorded commitment to restructuring. And voters should make, should drive away from their, their vicinity if anybody who comes to campaign without, first of all, that signing on the dotted line. Yeah. Knowing very well that with that kind of groundswell, if they fail to deliver, if they renege, uh, they will be stoned in this country. You have been known throughout your, your life as somebody who speaks courageously to power, uh, speaks fearlessly uh, in spite of danger uh, to your life and to your liberty. Where would you say at core that that courage comes from? Where did it come from? Um, uh, I don't use the word courage. <laughs> okay. Your parents, I know that, you know, your mother mm -hmm. was uh, very engaged in uh, anti-colonial politics. Mm -hmm. Your aunt, the late uh, Mrs. Fumilayo mm -hmm. Ransom Kuti was. Mm -hmm. um, is there something about growing up around those 
great figures, matriarchs. Um, yes, normally I would answer yes, but then I ask this, myself the question. Uh, take anybody, not just me now, within the same family, the same environment, the same schooling, educational pattern, the same models to see why does one individual go one way, another one the other way. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a mystery. it's something which sometimes I just say maybe it's something I ate as a child when nobody <laughs> was looking. Yeah. I have no idea. Yes. But that's, I just know that. Uh, Central to my existence is a peace of mind, mm -hmm. just to be at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. And if something is happening which does not enable me to be at peace with myself, then I have to take some kind of action. So there's a bit of a basis of selfishness about it, mm -hmm. that uh, I am the ultimate decider yes. of when I have that peace of it's, mind. <laughs> so when you say in your prison memoir, the man died, that the man dies in all who keeps silent in the face of tyranny. What was the evolution of that idea where you came to that assertion? Because this is something that was very important in my own formation, reading the man died. I have a suspicion that some things happen to one which one did, whose significance one did not notice at the time. Mm -hmm. As we were posing that question, I remembered one of my earliest short stories in school, you know, the school uh, magazine. At uh, university? At the, no, 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 uh, uh, at Government uh, College, rather. Yes. And, um, uh, and also the beginning of, shall we say, uh, rudimentary creativity, literary creativity, uh, under the auspices of uh, uh, agencies like the British Council, because I remember once they ran, mm -hmm. when I was in school, mm -hmm. they ran a competition, mm -hmm. short stories. Mm -hmm. And I found that uh, my short story usually, take, uh, usually took its material from the experience of slavery. Mm -hmm. In other words, from very early age, I, con I somehow, how that happened, I don't know, uh, came across the phenomenon of the enslavement of humanity. And I wrote a short story about it, totally fictionalized, and uh, in which the individual had to combat the moment from when I was very young, in government college, I don't know, had to combat the possibility of being enslaved. Mm. and even combat, escape, as one short story which actually escaped from the slave trail, the, the, slave, uh, uh, the, the line of slaves chained together, hid in, a, in a, the bowl of a tree. <laughs> and I remember the, uh, the judge saying, why, why, do you, uh, why are they always hiding inside, tree, inside trees? Yes. Well, I think I was fascinated <laughs> by those trees which had this bowl, yes, yes you know. Yes. And I was hiding there, so I said, find somewhere where for them to hide, at least you must write about slave, slavery. So that sense of the dehumanization of another human being was very strong with me. And I saw deeds of cruelty, the mis, um, mistreatment of house, house help, um, and of course the counter lessons in which, let us put it this way, my parents would say, don't you ever talk to that person like that, even though that person has a house, mm. you know, a house that is not your, you know, uh, your elder and will slap you or whatever. I saw, so I saw the counter, I saw the opposite, and I saw those who actually treated house help, who even burned them, with, uh, shamed them. And somehow along the way, I recognized that there was something called human dignity and that there are those who are sworn you know, to remove that asset mm. from other human beings. Mm -hmm. And I made a choice at some point. I can't remember making any other choice. Mm. But it all grew up with me. I grew up with it. Mm -hmm. And that's the only, only stance I can make. Wow. Mm. And then um, I'd like to talk about Biafra a little bit mm -hmm. and your role um, in Biafra, in the prelude to the Biafra War, mm -hmm. the Nigerian Civil War, which led to your detention. Um, I know that at the point when Gawan, 
was saying to keep Nigeria one was a task that must be done. You insisted that to keep Nigeria one, justice must be done. Justice must be done. Um, do you think that perhaps part of the crisis in Nigeria is that that perspective of justice has never been recognized? The reference had a moral right to secede. Mm. The question of political morality is very much on the side of the reference right. Of even of any level, any kind of parameter of ethical conduct. To me, there's no question at all. And in any case, as a general principle, I believe more in people than in nations. Yes. And I believe in self-constituted organic nation more than uh, nations which were donated by external forces <laughs> in humiliating just the idea of killing and dying to preserve those boundaries for me till today. It's one of the grossest acts of leadership stupidity that I've ever witnessed anywhere. Mm. It's a lack of pride even to say that. This is sacred, untouchable, mm -hmm. which is a product of external uh, domination. Mm -hmm. I find it unconscionable, mm -hmm. but short-sighted. Mm -hmm. Where I criticized Biafra was that it was not ready yes. to take such a step. Mm -hmm. And no amount of rhetoric, no amount of populist mm -hmm. drive, emotive uh, justification, mm -hmm. it cannot substitute mm -hmm. when the guns are out. Yes. That was my big criticism. Mm -hmm. So almost 50 years later, after Biafra, mm -hmm. so you have this agitation uh, for, for Biafra mm -hmm. by perhaps the grandchildren mm. of that war, mm. kids who were not born mm. uh, at the time. It's mm -hmm. an upsurge. Mm -hmm. It's never really stopped. Mm -hmm. And I said it at the time, you do not, you cannot destroy an idea like that. You just cannot. Mm -hmm. It had taken hold. It, it was both factual and mythological. Uh, it had to do with the sense of destiny. We were destined to do this, mm -hmm. destined to be this. And once, as a student of history, you know that once that takes mm -hmm. hold, it, it has a way mm -hmm. of uh, sort of multiplying mm -hmm. effect. It may seem to have died down uh, from the state. I said at the time, you can never defeat uh, the Afro. Mm -hmm. And it was taken literally, mm -hmm. but I know exactly what I expressed in like. that. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a sense that African literature in some quarters is enjoying a renaissance, a resurgence, because you know a lot of a number of younger African writers are writing. How much of it do you keep up with reading uh, much of that new uh, literature? And what do you think of its quality, of what, it, what it's doing? Hmm. There is a lot of good material coming out. Mm -hmm. I have uh, stacks, so you can't read all of them, but. Mm -hmm. I browse through mm. and then I read, you mm. know, some. And I think we've got a remarkable crop of mm. literary skills in this nation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really is very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. And a number of them, you know, are girls, young women. Mm -hmm. So I keep telling the men, you, male writers, you are getting extinct. <laughs> There's competition. <laughs> <laughs> you, you watch out, they're coming. Yes. So very, very promising. Okay. The, the problem with them is that many of them are rather impatient. Mm. Some of them don't understand, unfortunately, they don't understand what literature is about. And they feel it's just a question of just scribbling anything. Mm -hmm. Some are so unschooled grammatically that it's a horror to get through mm -hmm. once from one sentence mm -hmm. to the other. I have to go back and try and decode mm -hmm. what it's really trying mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. And yet they feel that they have arrived, mm -hmm. and that is the responsibility of the older generation to make a way say, mm -hmm. go to hell, yes. you know, go and land your trade, yes. and come back when you. Yes. So that's it. Okay. Mm. Prof, mm. Uh, it is such an honor and delight to, to be in your home and to have this very um, extraordinary conversation. Thank you very much for welcoming me to your home. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Fascinating, isn't it? Professor Shoenka is now 86 years old and he's still very active 
locally and internationally. Nigeria is lucky for that. Please, let's have your feedback on the three-part interview. And don't forget, you can always catch up on YouTube and our podcast series if you missed the earlier part of the conversation. Well, I hope you have enjoyed your time with us today. As always, I'm Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.